boy, it's your man Mike Bowens coming to you once again, live and direct. Listen, I got another powerful message for you. Listen, a lot of people have been writing into me, Mike, can you do some um, relationship videos? And so, you know, I realized I have not been doing as many of those lately. So I said, you know what? Let me do it. Um, the first one I want to talk, to talk about is how to keep from drifting apart. You know, in relationships, it's easy to drift apart because you got to think of, especially if you have children, if you have a career, if you're going to school, you know, managing your household, you know, quality time with God, all these type of things needs its proper place and in perspective. And sometimes if you're not careful, your relationship with your spouse can take a back seat to everything. Now, of course, we know God must be number one in our lives, right? But I'm saying after that, you must schedule time with your spouse, time to have a date, time to have a movie night. You may have different interests, but still, at some point, you got to say, listen, let's do this together. Let's do that together. Let's sit down and talk together, not just about um, our goals and bills. Let's just talk about us. Let's not talk about the kids. Let's talk about us. And by doing so, you are intentional with your relationship because there's no way for your relationship to continue to grow to the next level if you are not intentional about making it grow to the next level. That's a bomb going on. Boom! And so this is things that we got to take in consideration when you have your, your spouse and you're in a relationship. Like, listen, we're going to set up a time on the calendar every month or every Friday or every Tuesday, whatever days that you can for us time. Maybe it's, it's watch it now watching a movie together. Maybe it's going for a couple's massage. Maybe it's just walking in the park holding hands. Maybe it's having a picnic, you know, sitting down and getting a blanket on, on the floor or in the grass somewhere and having some fruits or having some a sandwich or whatever. Just quality time together so that you can take that time out to connect. And I can't tell you how many people are drifting apart because they're not taking the time out to connect. And, and, and some people, they're just in a bad situation in terms of one person works during the day, the other person works at night. So they're just passing each other. And naturally, if you don't spend time with each other, naturally you don't see each other, you're going to begin to drift apart. And which leaves room, as we say in the scriptures, it, it leaves room for the devil to come into your relationship because now you're being tempted at work. Now you're going to work and compliments your husband or he used to give you, now somebody else is giving you. Oh, your hair looks so nice today. And because you're lacking that attention, you're lacking that affection, you know, at first you don't pay attention to it, but then you start saying, mm, yeah, okay, thank you. You know, mm, makes me feel good when he says that. Oh, I like your outfit. Oh, I like your shoes. And then you start to say, hmm, man, he's paying attention to me. And then the devil start working on your mind. My husband don't even do that for me. He don't even notice the things that I do I do for him. He don't notice how I put this dress on for him. He don't notice how I make my hair look like this for him. He don't notice my new perfume. It's not that he don't notice. It's because your working schedules are so opposite that he don't have the time to tell you these sweet nothings in your ear. Vice versa for a woman to a man. You know, the man could be working and whatever, but you just had little babies. And so now he feels like I don't have any quality time with my wife. But you're like, I can't really give this time to you because I got to pour into these children. And why, by the time I finish pouring into these children, I'm exhausted. And so while it takes patience on both ends, I think that communication is going to be the key. And scheduling. Let's not forget the power of a schedule because you can schedule time to do whatever you want. You schedule, you schedule time to get to work on time. You schedule bills that's supposed to come out of your account. You schedule all these kind of things. So why not schedule time for love? I know that some people are going to write me, oh, that's corny, whatever. But then your relationship is probably jacked up because you're not scheduling time for love. And you can say that's corny all you want to, but it's the truth. You got to schedule in time for love. You got to be intentional about it because if not, you'll begin to drift away. And the next thing I want to say is um, don't forget the little things. Now, in a relationship, like I said, sometimes you can be with a person for a certain amount of time and people begin to take each other for granted. Not that they want to. It's just a natural um, progression if you're not conscious of the fact that you're doing so. Right. And so do the, do the little things like, hey, you know, wash the dishes when you can wash the dishes. I'm talking to the men right now. Right. Do the little things. Hey, I got laundry today. Don't you worry about that. Or, hey, I'm going to clean the bathroom. Don't you worry about that. Or women, 
you know, run him a bubble bath or just give him a massage. Don't even ask him, do you want one? Just give him one. He's not going to say no to that, right? Do the little things, right? Hugs, kisses, right? Doing the little things that shows that you are still interested in your spouse, that you still love your spouse. Compliment them when you see that they are trying to change their appearance or encourage them when you're trying to see that they're trying to lose weight or eat healthy, right? Do everything you can to show that you love and you care for them now just as before. And these are a few steps. I can even do a part two on it if you like, but these are a few steps to keep you from drifting apart. Um, last thing I want to say is that if your schedule is so lopsided that one person's working during the day and one person's during the night, it's time to get into prayer. That you can seek God for a strategy and something that you guys can be on the same schedule, the same, do the same thing at the same time. You know, one of the things that my wife did early, my wife and I did early on is, um, I remember years ago, we had a schedule like that. And so we said, you know, we got to do something in business that we could be together throughout the day and see our kids more because this is ridiculous. Um, so at that time we started in-house daycare and we were working together all the time, though that's work time, but we still were together. And then we had times to schedule vacation simultaneously. We had times to um, travel and do things together, make plans. And we're constantly seeing each other and talking to each other. I know for some people that's like, that's too much time. I need to get away from them. But that, you know, that's our relationship. And so now we at a point where, you know, we have a various of other businesses that we're able to run. So it gives us a tremendous amount of time. Now we have time on top of time. And so, but it, it benefits the relationship. You know, one thing you don't want to do is chase success and chase all these other things and forget about God and forget about your spouse and forget about your children. And a lot of times forget about yourself because you're not taking care of yourself because you're working so much. So I hope this message inspired, bless somebody. Hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for more notifications. And I want to tell you until next time, be blessed.